Uh, Deck and Amy, great to have you here. Uh, for the very first time at Noise11.com, I am honoured. Thanks for having us. 2019, we had the Amel and the Sniffers album. 2021 was uh, comfort to me. Does that mean uh, we're not too far off another album? You start, Declan. Yeah. Well, so fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, not too far away. Uh, Where are you at with new music then, Deck? Um, we've just started. When we, we got back from LA um, in February, so between then and now is when we've started this new album so it's very very new very new so there's no idea yet when it will be out will you be doing any road testing of the new material before we get the actual record maybe on the world as a vampire tour i mean that would be cool wouldn't it we'll see if we can pull finger and get that going (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> um, Amy, last time you played uh, before you came back to Australia was in Hollywood, a 20-song set list, and it goes all the way back to that very first EP when you do perform in uh, 2016. Uh, 2016, it wasn't a great year for music, I must admit. It was a pretty pop year, and along comes you guys and shake it all up. I can't imagine that uh, in, in recording a song like Stole My Push Bike, a band from uh, Balaclava in Melbourne, could have imagined that Five years later, you'll be performing that song in Hollywood. No, nah, not really. You don't even think about that stuff. We just, you know, chucked it online. We were happy to add five band, cl- band camp streams. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Balaclava, Lover, Boogie. That was also one of the early songs, a great song. And, uh, you know, I'm very, very pleased when I see a song with a with an Australian title popping up in an American set list. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. Do you get questions uh, by the Americans about, you know, what, what is that song all about? No, no. I think they think it's like balaclava, like the thing you wear in your head. So they think <laughs> it's like like real naughty, like, yeah, like, but it's just about the, t- the um, suburbs. But um, they more like ask kind of like, they don't know what Amel is. They think like my name is like a Swedish name, like Emil. Um <laughs> So it's constantly kind of describing that it's amyl nitrate. Uh, a meal and the sniffers. It does have a nice ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Not a meal, I'm a snack. Oh, yes. And a a meal really and the fun. sniffers sounds like it should be a Celine Dion cover band. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Deck, uh, one for you. Uh, when this band ver- uh, first started off, uh, Melbourne had a very vibrant uh, music scene. And, you know, when I talked about, you know, the, the pop of 2016, you know, you're in a sea of... Beavers and pinks at that point uh and you know along comes this band but you also had all these venues in melbourne uh to be able to perform in uh could this band have happened in any other city in australia probably not i guess um we were lucky that in melbourne you can book multiple nights a week um and people won't get sick of you i guess you get the opportunity to play in front of all different sorts of people at all different nights you get to play free events. You get to play bigger shows as well. So um, it's almost like when you're when you're a young band, if you get enough uh, interest to book yourself for a few, you know, maybe even consecutive weeks, one night a week, you can you can almost get that sort of uh, um, that experience that you get on the road just in Melbourne. You know, finding out where the fuck the toad is even though we knew where that was but you know that's just an example you know just jumping in a car google maps into a venue and stuff and finding out how to get your gear there um it was it's a good place for um starting out as a band i guess and i guess um when we started sydney was still in lockout laws I mean, I don't know what the hell the Brisbane music seems like. I know they got like three venues, don't they? I don't know. <laughs> it has a street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good for them. But uh no, nah, probably not. No, nah, we're very um we're a very Melbourne band, I guess, even though none of us are from Melbourne. Our friends at Last Chance, um, which is a bar in the city, they're going up to try and raise some money to buy the tote, which is for sale, and most likely gonna go to developers. So, you know, it's places like having the tote and the last chance, even though we only played at those venues a couple of times each. But just the fact that there's venues means that there's people wanting to go down. It's a community and stuff. You know, we used to go see bands five, six nights a week. And so did everybody else before, you know, kind of lockdown changed a lot of people's attitudes. But I don't know. Yeah. So if anyone's got any cash to chuck on their GoFundMe thing, then chuck it their way. 
that'd be great. I mean, the Tate was the first venue that the White Stripes ever played in on their first Australian tour. And yeah, uh, right. Second time the White Stripes came back, they played at the Corner Hotel, and then in in that band room out the back of the Corner Hotel is where Jack White wrote Seven Nation Army. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Have, have you hell? ever written a song backstage? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Not one that big. But that's huh? amazing. Yeah. Pretty noisy back there. It would have been easy for him with just one other band, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what about those early days, Deck? Did you ever have more people on stage than in the audience? Uh, you know, there must have been some times yeah. when you turned up and, and there was no one around. I can't think of the smallest crowd we've ever played to. I mean, whatever it would have been back in those days, it would have been really early days and I've drunk those away. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I actually was just looking through like my saved photos recently and I found a photo of us playing at the zoo in Brisbane and Amy got everyone got up on stage, I think forgot you or something or gacked on anger at the end of our set. And there's just heaps of people on stage. It was a real hot gig too, I remember being oh, in yeah. Brisbane. Yeah. And I was wearing an ex cult shirt. So we'd been to Memphis at that what point. What I mean like twenty nineteen, I reckon. Twenty nineteen, yeah. Amy, a question for you. I mean, this band has now been a very successful band in terms of clocking up awards, three arias, one air award, uh, four music Victoria awards. Um, does that make the hard work worthwhile? Honestly, it's a fun celebration, but it does that, that, that kind of thing isn't the thing that makes the work worthwhile. And then, like, it's really amazing to be recognised and it's fun to have accolades and it's a good little inflation of your ego, but that's not the stuff that does it. Um, I also feel like when we were at the Aria Awards this year, it was really fun again. Like it was fun to dress up. It was fun to have drinks. It was fun to hang out. But I just feel like it's probably not something that's sustainable because I feel like outside of a select handful of people, nobody really cared about it, um, which is also fine. But I think the things that make it worthwhile is getting to perform all the time, um, getting to be around, you know, music all the time getting to write music when um we see fit and the fact that we don't have to live inside like a normal just like society day to day like me and the boys like we have the weirdest lives so there are lots of touring musicians you're essentially a carny and to me that even though it's got its downfall that's probably what it's the reward uh, Dick, um, it's it's a fascinating set list that you guys put together because uh, you're at that point where you can shake things up every night, give the audience something different every night. Um, there's been nine singles from this band over time uh, and eight of those nine have been appearing in the set list. Uh, Monsoon Rock seems to be yeah. the only song that has been sort of dropped off the set list. Um, you, you haven't played that one since September last year. Why is that? Oh, that's amazing research. Um, I think uh, I feel like we almost forgot that song existed. I did. I didn't. Yeah, know I it. forgot. I forgot it existed. So it's kind of like when we when we when we write the set list. Usually, it's Amy writes the set list. Sometimes um, she gets cranky and makes someone else do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> like we just kind of go through. Like it, usually it's from memory or from a recent set list is how we write our set list. We just look at the last one we did. Um, and so that song ended up just kind of getting forgotten. I think. Um, I also reckon I've been like, oh, why don't we chuck in once in rock? And Gus is like, fuck, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, um, it's hard. It's a hard song to play. It's very, um, it's very riffy and very fast. And after when you know, like when we, you know, last year we did three months straight overseas, which is constant touring. Um, it gets hard to do it, pull it out every night. So it kind of got forgotten, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I never think about that. I always forget that. I always forget. Yeah, most I forget a lot of the self title when I'm writing set list. I guess. <laughs> well, one of the Funny songs you don't forget is uh, "Some Much Can't Be Muzzled." According to my research, that's the most played song you've ever done. Yeah, that's a fun one Isn't to play. It? It's a, it's the funnest song to play. Still, it's like up there, top three to play. I really enjoy it. I get a nice long solo in it. It drags it out. It's a good way to um end a set. You know what I mean? Um, it's kind of like it has a ending feeling to it, 
So oh, that's so cool. Like for me, when you guys start coming in with your little like doo, 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 and your you should, like playing your shit, I'm just getting to jam out. Yeah. So that's good. I didn't know that was our. I guess it is our most played. I would be. Well, some mutts got you and uh, Balaclava appear to be the top three. There you go. <laughs> Balaclava's fun no, too. Bal- Balaclava's getting lost now. We're not. We don't pull that no, out. but it's so fun. That's a, a, such a fun one as well for me. Again, because you guys are just like, yeah, and I get to just do my thing. Yeah, maybe we should pull it out. Yeah, I guess. Well, let's. We'll, we'll do it on Triple R. Yeah, um, the band is often mentioned in the same breath as uh, Iggy Pop, Iggy and the Stooges. Uh, Iggy's still going strong, seventy-five years old. He's got a new album out. Can can you guys see yourselves? Uh, getting up and performing songs like Hertz and Balaclava when you're 75 years old? We were talking about this yesterday, actually, because Declan, we're just talking about new album and stuff. And, you know, oh, Declan was like, oh, you know, when we're 80, 85 years old, we're up on stage. And Gus just gave, he's the bass player, just gave this dead look. He's like, you think I'm going to be fucking alive when I'm fucking 80? <laughs> I'm not going to be fucking alive. And if I was, I can't be fucking playing this shit. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, see what happens. Yeah, I feel like I want to live a life like Forrest Gump, like full of just different shit going on all the time. I mean, yeah, I understand what Amy's talking about as well. Like this, the band has been such a journey as well. It's kind of like, and it's not, and it's a journey that I don't think anyone expected. So it's like, oh, maybe we can do it again with completely different things. Maybe not together as well. I mean, as individuals, Amy, don't worry, I don't want to follow you into your next journey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But you don't want to start an egg farm or something? <laughs> an egg farm? That's what it's called. Cool. <laughs> when when we do anything, an egg Declan. farm. Yeah. Right. Amel's eggs. Yep. Amel's eggs. Amel's eggs. I like the I like the sound of that. Now we've got the Thank world of the vampire tour coming up. You're on tour with uh, the Smashing Pumpkins and Jane's Addiction. Uh, also out there with Red Hook and Battlesnake. A couple of great Australian bands. Are you are you familiar with both Red Hook and Battlesnake? Have you listened to their music yet? I actually haven't yet. No, not yet. I I saw I looked up Battlesnake and I saw a picture of them playing with Kiss all in their undies. So I thought that. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, should give him a listen. Well, maybe you guys can get up in your undies and play with uh, Billy Corgan then. <laughs> nah, I've, nah. I've done plenty of sessions of getting up there in my undies. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favourite Smashing Pumpkins and Jane's Addiction song, Amy? I used to give Jane's Addiction a good little listen. I like nothing shocking. Um, Smashing Pumpkins, I need to get a lesson in, I reckon. What about you, Deck? I like um, I like being caught stealing. That's a that's a great song. Oh yeah, that's a good song. That's been an answer of mine since twenty sixteen when we we're all broke, and um, I like. I the think one... you did get caught stealing once, and then you chucked that on. Yeah, I probably <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you're and... stealing earplugs from Coles and Balaclava, actually. Oh Remember dear, that? art imitating life. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, funnily enough. I just got tattooed yesterday, and the bloke who was tattooing next to me used to work at that cause. But, um, oh, really? Yeah. Um, and uh, I like the Despite All My Rage um, Smashing Pumpkins song. What's that? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. A bullet with butterfly wings. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah there you go. All right, well, uh, I am looking forward to seeing you guys live. Um, well, at the Melbourne shows at least. I'll, I'll get to see you down there at those ones. Uh, Did you say the York. castle that one of the shows we're playing is in a castle? Troll Castle. Oh. Yeah, Troll Castle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll be able looking to dress up to in, one. in suits of armour and walk around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can get our laughing gear on. That'll Live action role play. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Amy, Deck, thank you for joining us here at Noise 11. Cheers, Thanks, for having us.